in the top eight on loser's side, that's going to, you got to, I don't know, man. Let's jump into it. Pal Palutena versus Wolf. Nairo obviously repping the Palutena side. That's his main. Also has a ton, 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 ton of characters that Nairo can play on. You know, just in case Palu doesn't work out. You know, he's got the classic Ganondorf. He plays other characters as well. I know he likes to play, mess around with, like, honestly, literally anyway. I think the character select screen is Nairo's character. And yeah, he but got, he needs to pull out all the stops if he's going to try to take it out from the Jackal. Jackal. Jackal, on the other hand, is a Pichu. What well, used to be Pichu, now Wolf. He's rocking both of them. I've seen a lot of his play this tournament, mostly under Wolf, but he's not afraid to whip out that mouse if he needs to go in and combo someone. The problem is here is how well is he going to be able to contest space against Palutena? This is a very part of the course matchup as far as Wolf, once he gets in, let him get his three-piece hits. Let him rack up that damage because he's going to swing hard when he can. But Nairo, that airspace is his. This is an NRG no-flying zone. And honestly, this is going to turn into like a battle of the nares almost, right? Because a lot, the, some of the strongest options are their neutrals, especially at a shield, just to see what, who can land theirs first. They both lead into big combos. They both can lead into kills. Or Plow Tennis case can just outright kill. Back throw. That's going to kill. Got it. I mean, honestly, you know, saw him going in a little bit aggressive with that aerial. Just hits right into Nairo's shield, able to go for a free shield grab. Not as prevalent in this game as in previous iterations, but still a strong option, especially if you got a kill throw. Edge of the stage is exactly what Paolo is going to be looking for. But Nairo is one of those uh, un unorthodox players. He likes to go for some of the crazy options to keep his opponents on his toes. So he likes to go for the flashy plays. I feel like it's not even a lot of flashy play that we see out of Nairo. It's just his very good decision making. Like, he's not just going to move around with teleport canceling because he's skilled enough to. He's going to use it as a mix-up because he knows that Jackal is a smart enough player to call out aggressive movement options. He's just not going to throw out in there because he knows it's an active hitbox. He's going to do so when he's ready to whiff punish Jackal, when he's ready to call out those empty hops. Part of what makes Nairo such a dominant force, not just here in Tri-State, but on the global scale, is just how wise of a player he is. He's got all the tools in the world to use, but what makes him great is how he knows how to use them. There we go. We see an opening right there. You saw him go for the whiff grab. Jackal's going to try to drag him across the stage with the forward airs. But time and again, we see Jackal in this offstage position. Stage control completely in Nairo's favor. It's very beneficial, especially for the likes of Palutena, to be able to like throw out projectiles like the Explosive Flame, to be able to try to you know nail in a kill. Laying down the Nair just to turn the tables on him yet again. Catches the two frame, down tilt into a back air. Bro, it's so gross when Wolf gets picked out out of the sky like that because all his particle effects come with him too. Yeah. It's just rude, man. He loses man. his eye patch. Uh, that thing's flying off. He loses his claws. I don't even want to think about how that works. It's like, it's a rough scene, man. I wouldn't want to be Wolf. Nah, dude. Maybe. I wouldn't want to be Nairo right now, catching that back air right off the ledge and with almost no percentage really built up onto Jackal. This last stock is going to be starting himself out on the ledge, but I mean, hey, it's still a very doable battle. Extremely doable for both players, honestly. But here we go. Gets the neutral air, puts him off, forces out the double jump by going for the explosive flame to set him up for a potential spike, but it requires a lot of precision. And depending on also reading your opponent to see when they're going to go for the up and be. Gets the footstool, almost died to the footstool. Now it's completely doing that on purpose. It's a very strong option against someone who's up. He doesn't go as far as you think they would. Yeah, as far as the spaces are concerned, Wolf probably has the, like, quote unquote, the worst of their recovery. His side B is at a much more rigid angle. His up B doesn't travel as far. His jump not nearly as impressive as Fox or Falcos, especially Falcos. But I feel like where Wolf is going to falter with that, it's going to give Jackal a little bit more of a maneuverability as to what options he's using. But you know what? He's not going to see it in game one. Quick call out from Nairo, and that's where that first point is going to lie. He saw the grab coming. He was able to jump right above that and get the back air to punish the whiff grab because grabs are not as safe in this game. They are just not that safe. There's tons of lag afterwards. So if you whiff that joint, you're going to get punished. On top of that, it's especially not as good of an anti air option as it used to be. There's a specific grab hitbox for aerial opponents, and it is notably smaller. So. Outside of maybe one or two characters who are renowned for their grapple and play, those being Bowser and DK, not a lot of characters are going to get caught out of the sky with a grab. So, much easier to call it out, much more dangerous punish game, especially in the hands of an, a Nairo that's pressed against the corner. Anari right off the bat, just connecting a lot of neutral airs, catches out the double jump with that up air. Jackal had to land with an aerial because he was going to get try to like 
can get carried off stage without any of his resources. That's very important. And I was capitalizing on that. There we go, holding out that jab yet again. I was hoping he was gonna hold down into that upbeat. Very risky option from Jackal. Calls out the air dodge, gets the spike, and Nairo just immediately destroying that stock. It evaporated. Listen, people love to gas up Nairo's Ganondorf for how violent that gets and how dominant he can take stock. But let's not get past the fact that that's his style of play. When this man wants to remind you why he's one of the best, he damn well will. Oh, most definitely. Now here we go again. Now trying to apply pressure, going for the neutral air to try to call out the spot dodge. Maybe it'll like be a long-lasting hitbox. Gets the classic back air to explosive flame, trying to follow up with another, some more projectiles, but just a little bit too far out of reach. Jekyll knew he wanted to go for the auto reticles. That's why he went for the double jumper. It baits it out, tries to bait out the trump. Whoa! That, I mean, honestly, that was a good idea because you saw Jackal start to dash in, so he had the right thought process, but then Jackal reacted, hesitated, and then Nairo was stuck in the situation. Yeah, when Jude starts to get back into the gears of how he plays well, you even saw it right in that moment. He was like, wait a minute! I don't want to be running yeah. in on Nairo. I know I'm in disadvantage. He knows I'm in disadvantage. I can't be doing things like that. And, and that's why we're seeing Jude stay just a little bit more alive. He's trying to stretch the stock as best as he can, but so is Nairo, chilling at 153%, trying to bring Jackal down to his last. Down throw for the mix-up. Blasters are gonna extend this play, but it's gonna get dangerous. Good tech from Jackal, able to get back onto the stage. Nairo could not commit to the back throw, but just runs up, gets the grab, back throws him, and he is still sitting on three stocks. Yeah, but the stock is bleeding, man. Back there from center stage, that's not gonna do it. No, good DI like Nairo's. He's gotta end this off, especially before we reach that 200 marker. Quick boots, but now Jacko's still got a whole stock to work ahead before he's even on even ground. And he's out of jumps, hold on a second. Oh yeah, he got it back, managed to touch back on the ground. That's why he went for the immediate side B. He took the hit just to get his double jump back. Calls out again with another up smash, explosive flame. Did not expect him for him to DI towards the stage like that. We got more forward airs coming out from Jackal, but it's just a little bit too late because all the pressure coming from Nairo right now. Was hoping he was gonna air dodge and recover low. Nairo had the right idea. I think a lot of what this game two is gonna end up being for Jackal is just figuring out how he can turn up the pressure on Nairo. What can he learn about fighting against Nairo? That way he's more prepared for game three because this is looking like a very bleak situation, mind you. And while I think Jackal can def is definitely within the realms of possibilities for time things up, He's gonna have to do it with the overall set because it's not happening here. Did you see that chase? My man jumped on the platform. Bro, with he's a relentless. Dash attack, a dash attack, dash attack to catch out the air dodge, like mid air. And honestly, it's a really good option for just catching out the air dodge normally, like when they try to land back down onto the stage. But the fact that he chased after him via jumping onto that platform to throw it out, smart stuff. Knows exactly what's gonna happen. Nairo looks like he might be able to just take this out and move on to the top eight. Jackal's gotta put up a bigger fight. We'll see if we can do it. Taking on yet again to Pokemon Stadium 2. I don't know if this is the answer to keep taking it back to the stage. I know that Wolf likes the stage. I know that Jackal likes the stage. But the problem is that Palutena loves those platforms. She's able I, to teleport cancel off them. She's able to get neutral air combos off of them. I feel like a lot of this isn't really the stage play so much as just how good Nairo is controlling the ledge. No matter what stage Jackal brings us to, it's always going to be at the ledge. Somehow, some way, if Nairo has any say about it. But as far as the stage goes, I feel like it's, it's a lot more survivable for Jackal. And especially as he managed to take the first stock here in rather convincing fashion, I right. give credit to. Um, he went off so deep for that back air. Hold on a second. He knew exactly how Jackal was going to go for the recovery. He saw him drift backwards a bit before going for that double jump. Nah, here's a shield. Nairo going super deep for that. It's rough business, because even as Jackal starts to feel more and more prepared for fighting Nairo, you never know when Nairo's gonna stop with how well he's gonna grow throughout a set. He picks up on small habits. He knows what, what he's doing, when it's working, how to turn it up even harder. Calls out the double jump again, explosive flame. He's out of resources. He only has an air dodge left to go. Melee has to go for the side beat, but no punish from Nairo. I guess maybe he was expecting a roll afterwards. That's why he went for like a small little dash dance. I like this cute. It's a good option because he's able to act out of it so quick, and even if he does have his back turned to Jackal, he's still going to be in an advantage situation because from there, he can just bear. And we've already seen multiple times in this set that back air is working fantastically for Nairo so that he can try to check those aerial options from Jackal. 
Again, you see Nairo dash from across the stage to get that dash attack. Goes off, unteckable situation. He was too high a percent. Gets flying into the blast zone. One stock away from Nairo moving on to the top eight, loser's side. Try to go for the anti-air with the up smash. Not going to quite make it just yet. But I really hope Jackal doesn't get too impatient because this is still a win that's right within his grasp. A lot of percentage built up within this last stock of his. And you know Naro doesn't even want to try to give Jackal an edge, try to give him even a chance to start building momentum, right? Oh, absolutely. He's, he wants a 3-0, he wants it to be done with, because he, he he's done of, like, not winning tournaments. He wants to get his first place, but Jackal has other answers. He's like, I'm just going to go for an up smash out of shield, scoop you up, get the kill. And again, you see him trying to cross him up now with the forward air. This is the momentum that Naro should be afraid of. This right. is Jackal's last chance. Just as a reminder, the loser's side, this is the end of the road for one of these players, and Nairo's on the verge of sending Jackal packing. But coming into this last stock, plenty of momentum. But it's going to get stopped right there, right now, as Nairo takes a confident 3-0 over Jackal, cementing his spot in top eight loser's side tonight. Calls him out with the holy light. Up smash, being able to catch him off the ledge. Just a little bit of hip hop down there. Just, just a little, little bit, scoopy man. scoop. Just a little bit. But yeah, Nairo guaranteed top eight. I know he wants to go even further. I've seen Nairo do a loser's run in the past. I'll never forget Super Smash Con, man. Indeed. Never forget Ooh. that tournament where Nairo brought all the way back and wins. I am, I have no doubt in my mind that he has the potential to do it once more. But Jackal, congratulations. Going out with a ninth place finish here at Suplex City.